Today on Cook's Country, Bridget and Julia are making fried chicken wings on the grill. Adam reviews ice packs, Jack challenges Bridget to a tasting of barbecue sauce, and Brian makes Julia perfect grilled pork burgers. That's all right here on Cook's Country. Before the 1930s, you could only buy a whole chicken, but not the parts. So if you wanted to buy chicken wings, you only got two, and they came attached to the bird. After World War II, poultry production was mechanized, and chicken parts became a lot more available. This meant that economical cuts, like chicken wings, were finally available in bulk for the home cook. So over the years, chicken wing recipes really took off, and they could be deep fried baked, fricasseed, or even deviled. Nowadays, chicken wings are more popular than ever. In fact, in 2017, it's estimated that Americans ate well over one billion wings on Super Bowl weekend alone. Now today, we're going to show you a new way to make chicken wings. We're frying them on the grill. You know, the internet isn't just for looking at funny videos. You can find a lot of great recipes out there. And one such recipe that's blowing up is grill fried chicken wings. Frying on the grill. That's crazy. All right, so it's chicken wings. And the one thing we found out right off the bat is that chicken wings can dry out on the grill and that's an easy solution with a brine. So we have here two quarts of water and we're gonna make a buffalo style grilled wing. So okay. this is half a cup of hot sauce. And really buffalo wings aren't buffalo wings unless you use Frank's Red Hot, so that's the kind of sauce we're using. Okay. Now we're gonna add a quarter cup of salt and a quarter cup of sugar. And we're just gonna whisk and whisk until this dissolves. That should be pretty good. Now we're gonna set this aside and move on to the wings. Sounds good. This is three pounds of whole wings. Now I often see recipes or even restaurants that serve you this. There's no meat on this side, this no. wing tip. So I find it much better to cut the wing into the three sections. That way you get more surface area, more surface area, more crunch, more crunch. You're better off. That's right, and you can use those little tips for stock. That's right, I always put these in the freezer and save them. I'm just gonna cut through each joint. If you nail the joint right in the middle, the knife should just slide right through. Into the brine it goes. Now we're gonna to wanna to brine this for at least an hour, but you could brine it for up to three hours. Sounds good. All right, so that chicken is brined and I drained it, but notice I left it a little wet. Mm -hmm. That's good because it'll help the coating stick. And as for the dry ingredients, we have here two cups of all-purpose flour. And of course we're gonna season it up. This is a tablespoon of granulated garlic, a tablespoon of ground black pepper, a little spicy, two teaspoons of paprika, teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon cayenne. We're gonna whisk this together so it's nice and incorporated. Then we're gonna get to breading the chicken. All right, cause you don't often think of coating chicken and flour before you head out to grill. But with the flour on the chicken, it's got a little fried chicken mm -hmm. essence, right? Yeah, it makes a nice coating. Also helps the sauce adhere at the okay. end. Okay. Add the chicken. You really wanna pack it on. Really make sure it coats all the surfaces. And you're just gonna lay it onto a wire rack. Yeah, it looks like you're getting ready for the fryer. Mm-hmm, I know, right? The chicken is all nice and breaded, and we're gonna let that breaded chicken hang out for at least 30 minutes or up to two hours, because we really want the breading to adhere to the chicken, and that takes a little rest. We're gonna do that in the fridge while we light up the grill. All right, so I've been heating up this grill for about 15 minutes. That's with all the burners on high. Nice Ooh, and hot. Ooh, it feels good. Smoking hot. Uh -huh. So now's the perfect time, of course, to clean and oil the grill. Okay. Scrape off any gunk that's on there from the last time we cooked. Of course, we're gonna oil the grill, so I'm gonna take my trusty long tongs and some paper towels. I'm just gonna dip it in some vegetable oil and run the oil-soaked rags over the grill grates. The grill is good and ready. So I turned this burner off over here okay. because we don't wanna cook the wings over the fire or else they'll flare up. We wanna cook them nice and slow without burning. Burner on the other side, the primary burner, I'm gonna leave that on high, that keeps the grill hot. And so some grills have a burner in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna adjust the burner in the middle as I need to so the grill stays at 425 degrees. Okay. Two things about putting chicken wings on the grill. Fatty side up. Yes, there's a fatty and a less fatty side. Oh, I know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you also want the drumettes, which are a little thicker. You want them closer to the heat and okay. leave the flats farther from the heat. All right, now here are those flats. Again, this side has a bit thicker skin and a bit more fat. This side, you can almost see the bone right. coming through. So again, it's this fatty skin side that you okay. want to put up. All on there like little soldiers. We're gonna cook these with the lid down for about okay. 45 minutes. 
So these wings have been on here for 45 minutes. So you can start to smell them. Sure can. Mm -hmm. They don't so look fried though. They don't. And that was a problem when you do them on the grill, which we can solve by just adding a little bit of oil. Now this is three tablespoons of vegetable oil. I'm just gonna brush them on the top. And you just wanna make sure you douse them pretty thoroughly so that there's no more floury bits. So basically it's just enough oil so that that oil is mixing with the flour mix and you're getting kind of a fried crust. Exactly. No wing left behind. Mm -hmm. Not gonna flip them, just gonna put the lid down. We're gonna go for another 45 minutes. All right, so it's been another 45 minutes for a total of one and a half hours. Also known as an eon. <laughs> You've been very patient. <laughs> but you can see it's well oh. worth it. Yeah, they're gorgeous, they're crisp. Now we're just gonna take a quick temp. We really wanna cook these until they register 180 to 200. That's how you know the meat's gonna be tender. 183, we're in the zone. So these guys are ready to come off. Thank you very much. So we're gonna put these on the tray. And of course we're gonna sauce them when we get inside with some of that buffalo sauce. Oh, of course we but are. But we have to let these rest for about 10 minutes. Let that coating really set up before we toss them. Okay. Oh, thank you. Ooh. Mm. It smells like buffalo sauce. Hello. <laughs> it is buffalo sauce. Yes, this is a very quick buffalo style sauce. It's kind of a cheater buffalo sauce, but it's really good. It's just half a cup of Frank's Red Hot, and it has to be Frank's Red Hot for that distinctive buffalo flavor, mixed with four tablespoons of unsalted butter in the microwave one minute. Easy. Yeah, super easy. <laughs> now comes the payoff, the wings in the sauce. I'm just gonna add them right to the bowl and toss them around. And that hearty crust that you built up, mm -hmm. that can really withstand tossing in a sauce. It's not gonna get soggy. That's it. Oh, it's a good sound. Yeah. It smells good. And we'll start putting them on this platter. Now those are some wings. Glorious. Mm. Let's eat. Mmm. <laughs> Still crispy. Still crispy, very saucy. And you really get that smoke coming through on the chicken wing, and that's what's so unusual about these and why they're so good. The meat isn't dry at all. That brine and that little bit of the hot sauce, you get that flavor everywhere. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Can chicken wings be both grilled and fried? You bet. Brine chicken wings with salt, sugar, and hot sauce and make a quick coating with flour and spices. Dredge the chicken and refrigerate to set the coating. Start the wings on the cooler side of the grill until browned. Brush with oil and then grill until crisp and cooked through. Toss with a mix of hot sauce and butter and devour with a friend. So there you go from Cook's Country. It's grilled fried chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Years ago, at a Cook's Country outing, no less, I witnessed my first ice pack failure when two of them burst open inside a cooler filled with brining fresh hams. It was a real bummer to see those hams floating about in the blue liquid, but it did inspire us to do a testing of ice packs. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't at that Oh, <laughs> such a bummer. Okay, we did do an ice pack testing, Julie. You can see that we have eight products here. Mm -hmm. The price range was about $3.50 up to almost $30. We got the largest size that we could get from every manufacturer. Two of them were ice blankets. Yeah. Like that. So they're <laughs> meant to line the bottom of your cooler. Mm. This one's filled with water. Oh. Everything else was filled with a proprietary, non-toxic coolant designed to keep things as cold as frozen water does, but it's antibacterial. So, of course, we ripped them open and <laughs> poured them out. And I have some of that stuff here. Not snacks, Julia. Not snacks. <laughs> Do not eat. <laughs> Do not eat. Gotcha. Check out the blue one first. All right. Oh, it's very thick. Almost like gelatin that's not quite set up. And check out the green one. Let's see. Ooh, the color is something else. <laughs> it looks like scope to me. <laughs> it kind of does look like mouthwash. <laughs> to test these, testers put them in the freezer, froze them for 24 hours, and then used thermocouples and temperature tracking software to track their temperature rise from 32 degrees up to 50 degrees. Also to see how they did cooling down measured quantities of 75 degree water. And it was not a huge surprise, actually. The bigger packs did a better job cooling all these things down. But that left testers wondering what happens if you equalize the quantity. Mm -hmm. So they did a second round of testing. They got large rolling coolers, 38 quart capacity. They lined them with the packs, as many as would fit in in a single layer. They put in 24 cans of seltzer and soda at about 40 degrees. With the quantities equalized like that, 
They all kept the contents of the cooler at 50 degrees or less for at least eight hours. And that's cool for a picnic or a tailgate mm -hmm. or a party. The ones that got above 50 degrees for the soda and the seltzer mm -hmm. first were the ice blankets. Yeah, the blankets. They lasted for less than 24 hours. All of the other ice packs kept things cool for 24 hours or longer. Oh, wow. Guess which one was the best? Uh, I'm going with this guy. OK. What I didn't reveal to you before is they also filled a cooler with ice just to compare <laughs> and see what happens. And Sneaky. it was the winner. You're kidding. I am not kidding. Oh, you. Plain man. old fashioned ice. It cooled the drinks down to 33 degrees, kept them cool for 36 hours. Oh, my goodness. It was great. The best way to keep the contents of your cooler cool is with good old fashioned ice. Oh, wow. Obviously, it melts, it yeah. makes a mess. Yep. You have to have the time to go to the store and get it. Mm -hmm. But it's cheap, it's $2.99 for 10 pounds, roughly. And you know, as it melts, it turns into super chilled water, which totally envelops the contents of your cooler. Right. Does get it wet, but there's no air pockets to get warm. Right. If you don't want to bother with the ice, mm -hmm. if you want to keep the contents of the cooler dry and you want to go with an ice pack, Size really matters. Okay. Go with the biggest one you can get. And the in our case, the green one. The green one. That is the Arctic Ice Alaskan series, the extra large size. I Got like, a handy dandy handle. I like the handle. Five pounds, cost $20.99. All right. And it's reusable, obviously, yes. so that over time, the more you use it, it becomes a little less expensive. All right, so there you have it. None of these were able to beat a plain old bag of ice, but if you want a reusable ice pack, choose the Arctic Ice Alaskan Series Extra Large at just $20.99. We spent over $700 million on supermarket barbecue sauce. That's a lot of cash. So Jack's here to tell us all about our favorite brand. Yeah, so we tested the six leading sellers. The studio audience has already done the tasting. They chose the winner. A little all pressure. Right. Okay. Yeah. Got to live up to your standards. Yeah. yeah, so I brought three samples here. You can dig in. We did this tasting the way you're doing it straight from okay. the bottle. We did it with pulled pork, chicken fingers. Two things I want you to pay attention to. Okay. There's a pretty dramatic range of textures from gelatinous mm -hmm. to watery. As you might imagine, somewhere in between is ideal. Um, you want barbecue sauce thick enough that will cling to food, especially if you're going to be using it out on the grill. Um, but you don't want it to be pasty or starchy or gelatinous. Right. So we chose the best selling brands. Most of them are what I would call Kansas City style. Tomato forward, fairly sweet. Kind of an all purpose barbecue sauce. All purpose, but there are some outliers that are a different Ooh. style that perhaps where the sweetness is not forward. Huh? <laughs> so this is a tasting where the brand differences are huge. I mean, these aren't even in the same category, some of these. So type of sugar we thought was going to be really important. Some were made with cane sugar, some with high fructose corn syrup. Absolutely no difference whatsoever. The bigger thing was the amount of sugar. So the range here is from about 5 grams up to 16 grams per two tablespoons. The ones in the middle ended up kind of being hmm. the taster's favorites. That some were too sweet and some were not sweet enough. The big thing here is balance. You want smoke. You want spice, you want tomato, and you want sweetness, but you don't want one of those things to right. overpower the rest. And that's sort of the perfect barbecue sauce. So I've been talking, you've been dipping and sampling. What do you think of the three samples? Well, this one to me tastes like dried fruit a little bit. Get a little raisiny, very sweet for me. This one, very different from the other two, I have to say. And how's this one different? You know, I would compare it closer to a, a Carolina style. It has less of that smokiness going in there. Very tomatoey. Okay. I'm not saying that I don't like that, but I'm not sure that would be my go-to all-purpose sauce. This one to me says Kansas City. It has a little bit of molasses in there. I actually like the tomato presence in there a bit more. I think I have my winner. All right, but you're still eating. I'm still eating. It's barbecue <laughs> sauce. I'm going to eat until these are all gone. So where do you want to start? My favorite? Yeah, let's start with your favorite. All right, this one. Nice job. You chose the winner. This okay. is the bullseye. The studio Score. audience chose the bullseye. Good job. Um, this has got a good amount of sugar, but not too much. It has everything in balance. It's a lot of tomato, but there's a good hit of smoke, good hit of spice. It's a great barbecue sauce. I like the texture, too. Yeah, it's thick, but not too thick. Right. This one is actually my least favorite. I thought it was too thick and too fruity. This is Kraft. This was in the sort of bottom half of the rankings. Um, interesting. A lot of the comments were plummy. You mentioned oh, fruit. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, my favorite comment during the tasting was it was pumpkin 
uh, spice barbecue <laughs> sauce. And you read the ingredient list, it has a longer list of all kinds of spices, and it seems not as clean huh. as the others. This one, I actually, I kind of liked it. Yeah, so this is from Texas. It's a best-selling brand across the country. It's Stubbs. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of vinegar, yes. like the uh, Carolina styles. Same thing in Texas. They have a lot of vinegar in here. There's not as much sugar. It's the lowest sugar, and, right. really, and it's also very thin. Mm. It's really not a great on-the-grill sauce. It's more a dipping sauce. Well, there you go. And if you want to, here in the audience or at home, buy our winning barbecue sauce. It's Bullseye Original Barbecue Sauce, and it retails for $2.59 for 18 ounces. When you think of throwing some pork on the grill, you probably think of a pork chop or maybe pork tenderloin or even a rack of ribs. But today, Brian's going to introduce us to something totally new, a pork burger. Right, and pork burgers don't get nearly enough love out there. Mm -mm. But the thing is, they could be just as good, if not better, than a beef burger. That's throwing down the hall, <laughs> man. Well, they're juicy, or they can be juicy, and they take well to a lot of additional flavors. We happen to be making a Southwestern-themed burger today. Ooh. But there are some problems. Mm -hmm. With a pork burger, you want to cook it all the way through. You don't want to get a mid-rare pork burger. Nope. So we're looking for 150 degrees. And in doing that, we often get a dry hockey puck of a burger because we mm -hmm. took all the juice out of it. But there's a solution, all right. and it's called a panade. Yeah. Now, a panade is a mixture of sandwich bread and a liquid. In this case, we're using milk. I have one slice of hearty white sandwich bread here, and I'm going to add two tablespoons of milk to it. Mm -hmm. And as we mash that up, the starches in the bread absorb that milk and they start to form a gel. So when we add the pork to this, that gel is gonna coat the proteins in the meat and allow it to remain moist and tender, even all the way up to 150 degrees. Mm -hmm. You're probably already familiar with panades in meatballs and meatloaf. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept with this pork burger. You can see that I've got this bread nice and mashed up. And so now we can add some flavoring to the burger, like I mentioned before. No, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, it's the great thing about pork is it takes really well to flavor, whereas beef has a very strong flavor of its own, and you don't want to do a lot to mask it. All right, so we're going to start off with one minced shallot, two tablespoons of jarred hot pepper rings, four teaspoons of soy sauce, and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now, those two ingredients are going to give it a lot of umami, good savory flavor. One and a half teaspoons of chili powder, one and a quarter teaspoons of minced fresh thyme. You are packing a lot of flavor <laughs> into that bowl. It. It can handle it. One teaspoon of black pepper, one half teaspoon of salt, and one half teaspoon of minced fresh rosemary. Mm. Now this is a Southwest burger, but we also have recipes for a Parmesan or a Thai style burger. You can find those on our website, cookscountry.com. Okay, so we'll just mix that until it's fully incorporated into the panade. And now add our pork. So I have one and a half pounds of ground pork. Mm -hmm. We can just drop that right in there. Using our meat hooks, we're just going to work that in there. The panade is really the star of this show here. It makes it so the burger doesn't become tough, even after that prolonged cooking, even after working all this seasoning into it. So you can see that panade and seasoning mixture is fully incorporated into the meat, and so now we can make our burgers. First, we want to begin by dividing this up into four equal balls of meat here. Portion the meat first, then shape. Exactly. So we'll finish smoothing these out, so when I press it down, they don't crack on the edges. All right, so we want to press these down into about a four inch diameter, which is about three quarters of an inch thick. One more thing we're going to do to these burgers before we go out to the grill. Have you ever grilled a burger and it just pops up into this big yes. little softball? In the it grill? goes back into a meatball shape. Exactly. So we're just going to give it a slight depression. We're going to push down about a quarter of an inch with two fingers. When the burgers cook, that divot fills back in as the proteins tighten, and you just get this standard flat burger. Mm -hmm. And this works for all kinds of burgers, no matter what kind of meat you're using. So I'm just going to rinse my hands and we can make our sauce. So what's a great burger without a great sauce? I know you'd have a good sauce for the burger. No, you can put the sauce on any burger, any sandwich. Cardboard. Cardboard. <laughs> it really <laughs> elevates the flavor of cardboard tremendously. <laughs> so. OK, so I have a quarter cup of mayonnaise. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of sour cream, a tablespoon of horseradish. And you can bump this up to two tablespoons if you'd like a little bit spicier, a tablespoon of whole grain mustard, mm. one minced garlic clove, and a pinch of sugar. And just hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then a little drop of hot sauce. Oh. And we can just give that a quick whisk. So we have our burger shaped, we have our sauce made. We can head out to the grill and start cooking. Okay. Okay, Julia, we're ready to throw the burgers on the grill. We've preheated it on high for 15 minutes. We reduced the burners to medium, and now we need to clean it with this wire brush and then oil it. So always cleaning your grill right when it's hot is the best way to make sure it's clean before you cook. So we'll just take a wad of paper towels and dunk them in some oil. 
Rub that right over the grates. And don't be afraid to go over it a couple of times to really build up that oil. Okay, so now we're ready to put the burgers on the grill and we wanna put them on their divot side down. Divot down. That's right. <laughs> and you wanna do that because that divot's gonna collect juices otherwise. And when you gotta flip them, those juices could flare up. Ah, on so, something you must've figured out after a couple batches. A couple small fires, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just flip them down. Okay, we'll cover the grill. Let those burgers go for five minutes to brown the first side. Sounds good. Okay, Julia, it's been five minutes and we're ready to flip the burgers. Ooh, they smell good. Yeah, don't they? We could just go ahead and give them a quick flip. You can see that the burgers aren't doing that tennis ball thing. We'll let those go for five more minutes until they hit about 150 degrees. Sounds good. Okay, Julia, it's been another five minutes and the Ooh. burger should be ready to come off. The proper way to tamp a burger, because it's hard just to kind of come in from the top, mm -hmm. is you want to pick it up with a pair of tongs and go in from the side. What we're looking for is 150 degrees on these pork burgers. Nailed it. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, normally you'd be concerned if you had a beef burger that was 150 degrees, but right. because we have that panade in here, it's really saving them. So they're still going to be nice and juicy. Oh, they're beautiful. I love your grill marks. Thank you. While we're out of the grill, we can go ahead and toast these mm -hmm. buns. It's that little extra something special. <laughs> And those will just go for about a couple minutes until they're nice and marked. Okay. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tent the burgers to mm. keep them warm while we wait for those buns. Okay, so these buns are nicely marked after about two minutes. Mm. Just go ahead and put those on the platter. Okay. Nicely done. Yeah, so we're ready to go inside and build a burger. All right, let's go. Okay, Julia, so we're back inside. We're ready to serve these burgers. I'm ready to eat. May I? Please. Just because you're a newbie to the pork burger game, do you yeah. mind if I sauce you up? No, please. Just to show the true versatility of a pork burger, I'm gonna put <laughs> everything on it. I'll go for it. So, tomato, a tomato. little bit of onion, mm. piece of lettuce. This lettuce is gorgeous. Put this little cap on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That's delicious. It has so much flavor. It all oh. works so well together. Nothing's really overwhelming the flavor of the pork. Mm -mm. It's just all complimentary. It's a nice break from your average hamburger because it actually has flavor. Yeah. Change up your burger routine and try a pork burger. Start by mashing bread and milk together to make a panade. Then boost the flavor with potent ingredients like hot peppers, Worcestershire, and chili powder. When you shape the burgers, be sure to press a divot in the center, then grill the patties over medium heat until they register 150 degrees. And don't forget to grill the buns. Serve with a tangy horseradish sauce and you've got it. So from Cook's Country, a cool new recipe for grilled Southwest pork burgers. You can find this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, cookscountry.com. I'm digging this. <laughs> Me too. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>